Chicago, the town where El Capone and Michael Jordan left their indelible marks on history, also happens to be the home of Motorola Mobility. This lakeside town of over two and a half million may not be known for technology or design as much as it's known for Pete's and the Cubs, but if Motorola has its say, that's about to change. In fact, it kind of did change this week. Halfway through an ownership switch from Google to Lenovo, Motorola pulled some of the world's top technology press, yours included, to its new headquarters for the biggest product event it's held in a long time. But this isn't just about a phone launch, it's about making a statement. About two and a half, three years ago, we had a complete reset for our product portfolio and how we approach product and how we build products and how we approach consumers. We put ourselves back to the forefront in the minds of consumers because they really, these products really met some needs that people had and the results have been very good. In the first quarter, year over year, we grew 60%. In the second quarter, year over year, we grew 130%. We started out with Moto X and the proposition was simple and compelling. But Moto X was a part of a much bigger vision and arc. We always knew that the world would have different types of screen sizes, either in your pocket, on your wrist, and other places, and other types of wearable device. The second opportunity, we saw that even something as core and basic as smartphones weren't being offered to consumers in a proper way, especially in developing markets. Last year's Moto X set the stage for an all-new design language across Motorola's entire lineup, and this year's models, the GNX alike, take it to a new level. These are birds of a feather, and that's important. Sure, the X is cool, but the lower cost G is the breadwinner. The last generation G almost single-handedly gave Moto credibility in Brazil and India, and keeping that up means making the cheap phones look just as good as the expensive ones. We don't want to create a design language that is kind of too polarizing. Uh, we want to create something that represents what we think is important to the brand, which is kind of a, you know, personal, approachable, comfortable. From a physical perspective, there are signature aspects of it. You'll see, you know, on you know, all the Moto series is the familiar kind of curve on the top here that we always kind of have there. There's, there's functional reasons for it and there's also visual reasons for it. The, the curve is often talked about, I mean, it's packed with, you know, NFC antennas, batteries, curved batteries, stacked batteries originally, and the use of the very kind of thin edge here, right? The whole idea is to kind of, as we've said, is to fill the hand and create kind of uh, physical comfort, but when you look at it, to create something that is, is really light and kind of feels like more of a, a a natural form rather than something that's been kind of totally manufactured. We initially come up with 2D renderings of how the product needs to look based on the insights we have, um, our vision on where we want to take the product, um, and what are the different technology vectors that we have. Then we take these 2D renderings and then we convert those 2D renderings into actually 3D databases. And these 3D databases are actually made of parts that are actually inside the device. I, I think so much of great product development is, is almost like weaving, right? It's, it's, there's no, it's not a silver bullet thing. I, I, it's, about, it's about all the different pieces that come together and how you weave them together and that, that balance, which I think, you know, um, differentiates products. What maybe to some of us in industry might seem like a minor thing, because we're so absorbed in it. But from a, from a person who's touching and seeing it, I mean, that's, those things mean a lot, you know? I mean, you talk to somebody who goes to buy a pair of shoes or a bag, a lot of, they're different. The reason they're making, taking one bag versus the other isn't because it's, the bag is more functional. It's because the quality of the materials, the, the workmanship, the, the brand itself and what it stands for. And I think that's where this industry is heading, and I, and I think that's why we're pursuing Moto 360 the way we're pursuing it, the way we're pursuing uh, Hint that way, and, and the way we also are pursuing um, you know, Moto X is a, a system or a set of, of products that need to be high in style. The icing on the cake, the object that suggests that this Motorola has real technology and design shops, is of course the Moto 360. It's not perfect by any stretch. But if nothing else, it's an engineering marvel. We've done round before, but the challenge was how to make a round product without having all the circuitry, for example, an aura that you see at the bottom of the device. We have a display technology team 
that went to work and did an incredible job in building it. Then after uh, we figured out how to take hundreds of, of uh, lines and actual ICs that go around the display, how to make them disappear, what we did was we built an entirely round stainless steel structure. And, and essentially, um, the challenge was how do you put antennas on this thing? So this thing has a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna. The whole structure itself is antenna. And there's a unique way where the entire structure is connected. If you see, there's a, a, the, the back housing and on the board where all the RF connectors are supposed to go, where it's all in Z dimension. And so there is nothing that takes up space. I think people just assume everything can be done now. Uh, in many ways it can be. It's, it's a matter of choosing the right things to do. And for us right now, we, we really believe that, you know, people are ex expecting these things to look and behave like many of the other products that they have in their, their lives, whether it's shirts, clothing, or, 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 um, or other objects. And that's why we've made a considered effort, like over the last year or two, to really kind of bring in those very difficult things to do. Honestly, to walk down the street and hear a turn by turn in your hint and then look at a, a little little uh, turn by turn on your watch, I mean, that's the stuff that people, I mean, that's what people love doing. I mean, they don't want to actually get their phone out of their pocket, right, if they don't have to. The reason that our, our company and our groups made the 360s, there's so many people that were really passionate about, you know, how can the smartphone deconstruct, right? We've been kind of, in many ways, dreaming a lot about this uh, and inventing around this for the last, you know, three or four years. And I, and I think a lot of stuff's coming together that allows us to do it in, I think, a way that, that we think is truly kind of differentiated and, and the most compelling way to do it for, for, for people. For all the drama Motorola has been through over the past half decade, CEO changes, a split, two acquisitions, and the long shadow of the Razor, I just couldn't see any of it this week. Here's a company that has cool, genuinely interesting products, excited people, and an actual plan for setting itself apart from the Samsungs and Apples of the world. I don't know if they're going to win, this isn't an easy or a cheap market to play in, but even if they don't, I get the sense that they're going to go down swinging. Our design teams have I always had a real clear point of view, and I personally have had like, okay, I believe it should be this, it should be this, it should be this. But at a certain point, it's like, what the hell? I'm not here to design for me, right? I'm here to design for you. So as a designer, when we first started looking at Moto X and the approach to Moto Maker, there was a degree of like, okay, we gotta step back here, you know, and let some things go. Um, and instead focus on a design that allows us to curate something that gives people, set it up so that people can make great choices, but allow them to be part of the process. And so we've decided to embrace it. Um, there's a certain cathartic thing that happens when you kind of like do that at first, you like, you know, and then you, you realize that the person who chose Mint last year, even though it maybe was 1.5% of the people, absolutely loves Mint, you know? And so we did something that allowed that person to have exactly what they wanted. Um, and that's more important than me getting what I want. And so, I don't know, I think it's just a, it's a mindset change, but design is design and it, it's about designing for somebody else. I'm not a painter, my parents were artists. I'm not gonna force my taste on, you know, everybody. What we're wanting to do is express our brand through design and the definition of a product and kind of create something that we think is really compelling on its own, then allow you to take it the rest of the way, whether it's the functionality, the software, or what we do in design. Um, and to me, that's, that's an inclusive design process that we think is important to pursue right now.